All right, hey, Capri Calc guys, here we go. It, uh, we're talking about exponential functions at the very beginning of the chapter. We're only going to do a few sections of this chapter. Um, we're going to get through these logarithms as quickly as we possibly can. We're going to get to logarithmic uh, e equations um, as quickly as we can. We'll take care of those, and then we can move right on to the unit circle. But i got to get you through this. We have to know what an exponential function is. We have to know what a logarithmic function looks like, and we have to know about operations with logarithms. Um, and so here's the very beginning of it. Exponential function means it, it zips up real fast after a while or, or it zips down real fast. Um, uh, the whole world around you, um, very few things that you can look at in nature um, can be graphed on a straight line. Uh, most everything has curves. Most everything has this, this wonderful E number out there that you're going to learn a little bit later, uh, Euler's number. Uh, it, it just, it's that occurrence in nature. It's like one of those fantastic things that those crazy guys who do mathematics, you know, way back when, they discovered when they were looking at, at nature and things that happened outside all the time. So we're going to start looking at it here. Um, an exponential function, we're going to talk about the idea of what are we looking at when we're looking at uh, an exponential function. It's something to the x power. Uh, are we talking about a number that's less than one? Well, then we're going to have exponential decay, right? If the number is less than one but greater than zero, then now we have exponential decay. If B, this, this uh, coefficient here, is greater than one, then we're going to have um, exponential growth. And that's basically what there is to, all, all there is to it. I want to show you what the graphs look like. Um, this one right here is exponential decay. This is this graph here, exponential decay. Now, when we talk about those graphs, we talk about what is the domain of the function? What is the range of the function? Are there any asymptotes in the function? Um, and yes, you're going to see that. With exponential decay, we're not going to end up with anything negative. We're not going to get any, any outputs that are negatives. It just doesn't exist. So we're going to have, if it's just one-third, to the x power, we're going to have this exponential decay, but we're going to have an asymptote right here, right here along the x-axis. Okay, and I'm going to just keep it going there, and it's an asymptote. We're going to make it a dotted line, and that's just me cheating and making a dotted line right there. Um, uh, other than that, we talk about n behaviors as x approaches negative infinity. Um, this uh, this n behavior goes up toward positive infinity, and as x approaches infinity, going this way, remember when we talk about n behaviors, we go out that way. Um, when we talk about this n behavior here, it's heading this way. As, as x approaches infinity, this is trying to approach zero, but it never really gets it. Why? Because there's a one in the numerator. Never gets to zero. Poor little fella. Anyway, that's what it is. Um, when we talk about the, what's happening um, from negative infinity to positive infinity, this graph is always decreasing left to right. And that's really all there is to it when you look at the, when you look at the graph of the function itself. So let's move on down the line. I'm going to get to the bottom of this, this page. And I'm going to look at these two fellas. And I, I cheated. I didn't really cheat, but I graphed this first one for you. I'm going to try and move this over if I can so you can see the graph, and then I'm going to go ahead and graph it. If I turn this on, I've already graphed this function here, and you can see you already know that it's 2 to the x something, um, so it's going to be exponential growth because this is greater than 1. So um, this has been shifted over, shifted over to the white, right one space, remember, out inside the parentheses or part of the power. Um, it's been shifted to the right because it's minus one and its y-intercept is up one. So it's gonna cross here, right? But it's been shifted over, so it's also going right here. And so we have an exponential function if I put numbers in there, I could find it, but it's going to look something like that, okay? And uh, if I go ahead and I put in, 
I'll go ahead and change my, my function. We see domain, <coughs> pardon me, the domain is, is negative infinity to positive infinity. Its range goes from zero to positive infinity. Again, this asymptote is right here on the x-axis. Uh, same things as before, only we're forever increasing. So now I'm going to change this uh, to show you the next function. Um, and I'm just going to change it to e to the negative 2x. I'm going to show you what that looks like. The e button, Most some of you guys don't know what that is. Um, e is Euler's number, um, and it's the second function of the natural log. So that's e. And we want e to the negative 2x. And then I'm going to move over and delete this stuff. You have to delete one more time. And then I can graph it if I hit the button the right way. All right. And it should show me something like this. And all it is is, is a graph that shoots way up high because it's, it's, this is a number that's, that's bigger than zero. It's almost three. Um, comes shooting in here and does that. Um, I made it cross a little bit too high, but you understand the idea, exponential decay with this negative exponent. There we go. And that's really all there is to it. There's not a whole lot of, of crazy work. You're just analyzing what these things look like, being able to put them into a calculator. That's half your battle right there. Um, let's go ahead and move on. Take a look at page two. Page two tells us, oh God, here we go. So we have three formulas. All right. We have an, an exponential growth formula, and this is the rate of growth, and this is the amount of years. So you're going to go ahead and, and, if we're looking at population, and population changes at a certain rate for a certain number of years, you're going to go ahead and use this formula here, and, and, and n naught or n at the zero time, um, is your original number that you started with. So if you're talking about, um, this one says you have a population of 100 cells and they reproduce at a rate of 25% every week. Um, what is the expected population in six weeks? So we'll set our time as weeks um, and we'll go ahead and say that that's six weeks. We like to keep T in years, but that's when we're talking more about interest. And that's this little fellow over here. Um, I'm going to talk about another interest formula that goes along with this. This is continuous exponential growth. And this is where Euler shows up, right? If we have continuous growth and it's growing over time, over and over and over, over time, right? And it's continual. All we do is we take that original number, we multiply by Euler's number, and then we, we take k, which is the rate of growth or decay, and t is the time uh, that we're given. So I'll show you that momentarily, uh, but the last couple of things I want to talk about are compound interest. There are two formulas. This formula, which is very much like this formula, the only thing that's different about compound interest is this n here, right? n is different. And the n is the number of times that interest is dumped into the account. And n is the number of times that money is compounded uh, due to interest, okay? And that's really not a big deal. Um, nowadays, interest is compounded continuously. Um, and then that formula would be A equals P, E to the RT. Everybody calls it PERT because that's what it looks like. Um, but that's what we use for continu continuously compounding interest in, in life itself. That's what we do nowadays. Um, let's see if we've got any wonderful uh, problems to do on this page. I'm going to jump way down here and um, 
Um, I'll just take a look at this one right here. It says, compare the balance after 10 years of $5,000 that were invested at 8.5% interest. And this is compounded quarterly, right? So four terms, right? Quarterly. All right. 10 years. So when we're talking, this is P. That's your principal. Okay. I could say P not, but it's not really going to be your principal once we find out how much the uh, investment is after the interest is dumped in. Um, T is the number of years. Uh, R is our rate. And compounded quarterly, so N is equal to 4. All right, well, we just drop this into our formula, P, right? So I'll say <laughs> 5,000. That's our 100%, right? Uh, plus R over N. Oh, geez, I keep doing the same thing. Uh, I'm going to just put the numbers in. Um, our, our rate, which is really, really important, um, our rate is going to be in decimal form, 0 0.085 over N, which is 4. I don't know why I keep doing this. And divided by 4, and then N, which is 4 um, times 10. Okay, and, and we can just put this into the calculator and figure this out. We can simplify a little bit. Um, I don't know off the top of my head what 0.85 divided by 4 is. Uh, let's find out. Uh, move this back over, and then just start doing some simple math. I'll get here. I'll go back here. Oh, logs. We don't want to play with logs yet. Um, let's do one. Oh, clear that out. I want to do a 0 0.85, 0 0.085 um, divided by 4. Enter. Plus one. That's me cheating. Um, so this is point one point zero two one two five, and I already know that it's to the fortieth power, five thousand dollars. So um, I'm going to go ahead and raise that to the fortieth power to the fortieth give myself an answer. This is just me cheating and then multiply by 5,000. Uh, let me delete that. Back, delete, and then I'm going to say uh, the answer times 5,000. Uh, sorry about that. Two point Three one eight nine times five thousand. Sorry about the work there. Holy cow! There we go, and we've got eleven thousand five hundred ninety-five dollars basically. So if you leave your money in the bank and you get great interest, by the way, um, uh, five ninety-five. So it's just about right now. If I had this money compounded continuously, um, you would see a much, much better number. Watch, well, not much, much better, but you, you get more interest. 5,000, um, and I'm gonna put in E to the, I'm gonna put parentheses around it, um, 0 0.085 times uh, 10, Close those parentheses, and you're going to see we got an extra hundred dollars out of this over those ten years. If this was compounded continuously, you can't really see this number. I'm going to darken it for you. It's one thousand one hundred. Uh, sorry, eleven thousand six hundred ninety-eight. I'm having a tough time talking today. Um, so that's a lot better than if it was compounded 
uh, every quarter, every three months, as it were. Um, so those are the ways to find certain things. The formulas are there for you. Have fun. I'll talk to you next time.